let's talk about using Polaris to determine your latitude. So sailors, back when they first started navigating through the oceans, uh, had to rely on stars. They didn't have GPS. Um, they had the sun during the day, and they knew that that rose and set east and west. But at night, the stars were their only navigation tool. And back when these sailors were navigating the oceans, there were lots of stars. It, you know, it was a different time when there wasn't a lot of light, and um, they can have a good view of, you know, all the stars that are in a particular hemisphere. And there was one particular star that was very useful. You could see it here. This is the Big Dipper, um, available on almost any uh, night if you know where to look. And the Big Dipper has um, a total of seven stars that make up this constellation. And if you take the bottom two stars in this constellation, you draw a straight line, it points to a star called Polaris. And Polaris is the name of the star, but we know it as the North Star. And what's important about the North Star is that it's called a circumpolar star. And that name, circumpolar, literally means that other stars and celestial objects appear to rotate around it. The streaks you're looking at in this picture are stars that have been taken um, by a photograph that's, you know, over time, uh, every hour, taken uh, pictures of the stars as they move. Now, the stars aren't really moving. It's the Earth that's rotating. And as the Earth rotates, um, the Earth rotates in a circle and doesn't seem to move uh, around this star, the North Star. The North Star stays fixed in this position. It would really be at the center of this picture. So we call it our circumpolar star. And the way that that works is that the Earth has, as you know, <clears throat> a North and a South Pole. Now, those aren't real poles. Like, if I went to the North Pole, there's no pole sticking out of the Earth. Uh, it's about being a magnet, right? The, the Earth has a magnetic field, which is related to the north and the south ends of a magnet. Anyway, if I were to draw a straight line up from our North Pole, it would reach Polaris. Now, Polaris is like 434 light years away. But that star, its position relative to our location in space, the Earth rotates... Um, around this star. In other words, uh, as we turn, that star stays in a fixed position, but everything else seems to spin around it. And that's because Polaris is directly above the North Pole, and it's only visible to the Northern Hemisphere. And what sailors realized, and we now know, is that if you were looking at Polaris from the equator, there would be an angle at which Polaris was above the horizon, the surface of the Earth. That angle was measurable. And as you changed your latitude, as you moved up towards the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere, that angle would also change. It would get bigger. You'd have a bigger angle. And as I continued to move, that angle would continue to grow in size. Eventually, if I was standing at the North Pole, there was no angle because the North Star was directly overhead. So because Earth is round, Polaris changes its altitude as an observer travels between the latitudes in the Northern Hemisphere. So that's what early navigators would use. You could see in that picture uh, a device that's called an astrolab. And an astrolab would calculate your latitude based on the position of Polaris. And Polaris was one of the stars used. Um, there are other stars. Uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, they have their own stars that they rely on. But again, as I said, the North Star Polaris is only visible in the Northern Hemisphere. So what this looks like is if I'm on um, any, any part of the Northern Hemisphere, so if I'm in the Northern Hemisphere and I'm at a low latitude like the equator, Polaris has a low altitude. But as I travel up to the higher latitudes, the altitude of Polaris also increases. 
Let me show you another example. So here I am, or here somebody is, not me, I wish it was me, uh, standing on the beach at the equator, looking out over on at the sea. And, and it's, a, it's a night photograph, and I, I made Polaris look like a star. Stars really don't look like that. But anyway, um, you see how it's low in the sky? It has a low altitude. That's because my position in the Northern Hemisphere is the lowest I could possibly be. The lowest position, this is a little confusing, I can be in the Northern Hemisphere is at the equator. If I go a little bit below the equator, then I'm not in the Northern Hemisphere anymore. I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. So because of this, at the equator, which is a zero degree latitude, Polaris has an altitude of zero degrees. So its height above the horizon is right on the edge. It would be right at the edge of the horizon. And if I went to the North Pole, okay, and I stood there at night, and I don't have a night photograph, but if I was there at night and I looked straight up, that's where the North Pole would be because I am at the highest point in the Northern Hemisphere, which is 90 degrees north, and that would put North Star right above me has an altitude of 90 degrees, a right angle. So let's look at something familiar to us, New York, right? Where's the North Star for us in New York? Well, we have a latitude equal to 41 degrees, right? Um, that's great, Nick, but New York, New York City is a little bit lower, so it's about 40 degrees, right? So um, if it has a latitude of 40 degrees, then Polaris must have an altitude of 40 degrees. Notice, though, if my latitude is 40 degrees north, my altitude is just 40 degrees. When you're, ref when you're um, sharing your altitude, there are no directions associated with altitude. Because altitude is height above sea level. There's no direction. Okay? All right, so just one more visual. If I'm standing at the equator... <clears throat> my latitude will increase as I travel towards the North Pole. As I get to the North Pole, the altitude of Polaris also increases. All right, let's take a look at a region's question. Um, this one is saying that the observer is viewing Polaris that um, has an altitude of 20 degrees above the horizon. So the information that's being given to us is that Polaris has an altitude of 20 degrees. What's the latitude? Well, latitude matches altitude in the northern hemisphere for Polaris. So that must mean that this observer is standing at 20 degrees north. All right, so it's the same value, 20 degrees, just with the N attached to it, because latitude has a north or south unit. Let's take a look at another example. So here's an observer um, looking at Polaris, and Polaris has uh, an altitude of 66 and a half degrees. It looks tricky because they're giving you two numbers and a word called zenith. That's famous. That's it's trying to throw you off. But stick to what you know. The horizon is this line, the dotted line, and Polaris is 66 and a half degrees up from that. So that must mean that the altitude of Polaris is 66 and a half degrees, right? That's what we're being told. Now, what's the latitude? Again, the latitude matches the altitude. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and Polaris has an altitude of 66 and a half degrees, that means that you're at 66 and a half degrees north, okay? You'll definitely need to practice and we'll do that in class, but um, thanks for watching.